Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. It's wonderful to see so many present coming together to worship our Lord. I want to welcome everyone today that's in person here at St. John's and also those worshiping online with us. And a special welcome to all Delilah Ray's family. We are excited to share with her today in her baptism. We want to thank Pastor Trephine for being with us today and sharing her message. Before we get started, do we have, does anyone have any birthdays or anniversaries that they celebrated last week or coming up? We'd love to celebrate a little with you. Just sing you a little song. Yeah, Brian. Oh, wonderful. Happy birthday. Any, oh, is there a birthday back there? Oh, we have two birthdays in the back. And, De and Delilah's. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, wonderful things to celebrate. Anyone else? Scanning the crowd. Okay. Ward, lead us off. And we got great birthdays to celebrate today. Minnie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friend. Happy birthday to you. Let us begin with prayer. Dear Lord, let us have enthusiasm for praising you and let it be infectious to others. Let us be a light to everyone who crosses our paths. Let the joy that comes from worshiping with other believers bleed into every aspect of our lives. Whenever we worship with fellow believers, remind us that even though we are all very different, we are all members of the same body of Christ and are therefore unified in our goal and our joy. Amen. stand as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water uh, when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with our baptism service. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you can come around a little farther.
In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith and love and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors? We present July 1 for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Delilah baptized into Christ? We do. As you bring your child to receive the gift of, of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people. Bring the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise uh, to help Delilah grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture her in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Thank you. People of God, do you promise to support Delilah and pray for her in her new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I do. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to, to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. <laughs> she wants to dive in. Can, can you put her on her back? Delilah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Delilah with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. 
now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Delilah, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. I'm tall enough to do this. I might have to have you do it. Can you do it? Piece of cake. Yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. Um, we present um, to Delilah a candle. I encourage you to light this every year on, on uh, August 20th. And you can talk to her about baptism and the fact that she is a child of God. And um, that, that's something that we've done with our, our children. And um, they found it very meaningful. So. Okay. Um, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> Let's welcome. You can go back to your seat. You can return to your seat. There's too much going on this morning. Just give me a few thoughts. We've done that. Okay, let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your son to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn. Our Lord gives us everything. He gives us our life, our family, our newest member of the faith, Delilah Ray. He deserves our praise always. So please join in us, with us and sing his praise and remember all he provides to you and how great is our Lord.
Our first reading today is found in Isaiah chapter 56, beginning at verse 1 and also 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the, of the Lord. God. Our second reading is in the book of Romans, begin in chapter 11. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the Holy Gospel. And this, this Gospel reading is from Matthew 15, um, not the, not the uh, chapter 13. And actually it extends after, after this reading, it goes on for another section. So you'll be able to read, par read along a part of it, but not all of it. Okay, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. 15th. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know what the, what the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth and enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is, this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, um, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with washed, unwashed hands does not defile. You can be seated for the rest of the reading. It's long. <coughs> Jesus left that place and went to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon, but he did not answer her at all. And this disip his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, even the, but yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, 
great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to be. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Does anyone want to join me and sit up on the steps with Pastor and we can hear her share a little children's message with us? I think it's, is it Kayla? Kyla, do you want to come up with me? Maybe Mom can come up too? Let's do that. And in in um, in the reading for this uh, for this message. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Um, but what about you? And who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. One of my favorite television programs, um, many of you probably have never seen it or heard of it, is called The Lone Ranger. And I used to, I love every week, I'd go down and turn on the television and listen to the, the music. And I listen to the opening theme, and I, I think it goes like, da 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 So, um, and I still remember it for, from then. As you may or may not know, uh, the Lone Ranger wore a mask. So he always wore a mask, and uh, this was his, his friend and partner, um, Tonto. Okay. <laughs> um, the Lone Ranger and Tonto would be traveling all over the, the West looking for um, people that he found were not being treated well and, and things like that. And, and at the end of the show, when um, he was leaving, he and Tonto were on their horses, and then somebody would say, who was that masked man? And that's kind of what, what was going on with the disciples. Oh, yeah, then he would say, hi, oh, silver. Uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> so when, the, when Jesus lived on earth, he went around helping people too. He fed, fed the hungry and healed the sick. He made blind to see and the lame to walk. After Jesus healed someone, it wasn't unusual to hear someone in the crowd say, who is this man? Jesus heard people asking that question. And he also heard answers that people gave. One day, Jesus asked his disciples, Who do you say that I am? The disciples said, Well, some think you are John the Baptist. Others think Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets come back to life. But who do you say that I am? Jesus asked. Simon Peter spoke up and said, You are the Christ the son of the living God. And Jesus said, you are right, Peter. Many people today do not, many t people today do not know Jesus and are asking, who is this man? People give many answers. Some say he was a great teacher. Others say he was a prophet or a religious leader. The real answer to that question is the same as what Peter gave. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us pray. Jesus, we confess that you are Christ, the Son of the living God, the one in whose name we pray. Amen.
thank you for coming up. You can go back to your seats. Whoops. You got can candy. Have candy first. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Here we have one of the most amazing stories in the Bible, in the New Testament. It is, it is the profound and troubling and ultimately transformative story of Jesus' encounter with the Canaanite woman. It is also a story that is situated in almost every way in the borderland, on the boundary between Jew and Gentile, uh, between friend and enemy, and between the sacred and the profane. It is a story of pain and power and prayer, and ultimately ab about blessing. It is not just a nice little story about Jesus granting the request of a Gentile woman. Rather, at its deepest level, it is a, a complex and fearful story about Jesus, his sense of identity, and his mission being transformed, and about the boundaries separating Jew from Gentile, friend from enemy, and female, and, and, and against male. Sorry. No stories about sweet Jesus, meek and mild today. Only the fearsome blessing of God waiting for us somewhere out there along the borderlands of our faith. Here's what happens in our story. Um, fresh, <laughs> fresh from a, con a confrontation with the religious authorities of the day, Jesus travels to the far northwest border of Israel, to the region of Tyre and Sidon. This is Gentile territory, which means that a Jew like Jesus was approaching enemy territory. And out there in the borderland between Jew and Gentile, between friend and enemy, Jesus is suddenly approached by a local woman. We are told that she was a Canaanite, which means she was not just any old um, Gentile. Canaanites were old and bitter enemies of Israel. In first century Palestine, Jesus and this woman are separated by religious boundaries, national boundaries, and gender boundaries. The first thing that happens is that the woman starts shouting she shouts, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Let's take a, look, let's take a moment to notice some of the details. Um, notice that the Canaanite woman shouts to Jesus. And in this shouting, we see the distance between Jesus and the woman symbolized. Boundaries between Jew and Gentile, male and female, friend and enemy separate them. And perhaps she feels it's not its best not to get too close. So she shouts at him from a safe distance, trying to communicate across the boundaries that keep them separate. Notice that the woman says, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented by a demon. She does not ha say, have mercy on my daughter, but rather, have mercy on me. Something is tormenting her daughter. A mother who sees her daughter is suffering. A mother who sees her, daughter, his, her child cr dying is a mother who is suffering and dying herself. The pain and power in that pl plea 
our for mer plea for mercy are almost too much to bear. A mother sees her child suffering and dying, and she can, cannot bear the pain it is causing her. So she cries out, Lord, have mercy on me, because my daughter is tormented. Out in the borderlands of our faith, a woman's child is being tormented, and she cries out, Lord, have mercy on me. And astonishingly, we are told Jesus did not answer her, and the silence is deafening. The woman is in desperate need, and in her despair, she recognizes that Jesus is Lord, and she cries out to him for mercy, and Jesus is silent. And just like that, we are at the mysterious borderland between heaven and earth, between the human and the divine. The Canaanite woman has come up against um, the awesome and fearful silence of God. As the psalmist puts it, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. So in the midst of the pain and suffering in our lives, we cry out to the heavens, Lord, have mercy on me. And often we are met with silence. The borderland between heaven and earth, between God and humanity, is often experienced as a silent abyss. Out of, in the borderlands of our faith, we are often met with the fearful silence of God. The question is, what will we do in the face of the mysterious silence of God? What will the Canaanite woman do in the face of this silence? Will she turn back discouraged or sorrowful? Or will she persist despite the silence? She persists. Notice the disciples saying, send her away for she keeps shouting about after us she keeps shouting after us in the words of jesus hard-hearted disciples we hear of the persistence of the canaanite woman in spite of the silence of jesus she keeps shouting after them perhaps persistence is really faith she keeps crying out in mercy in spite of of the silence of God. She keeps saying, Lord, have mercy on me. When we find ourselves at the, at the end of our rope, at the edges of our faith, we, are, we find ourselves crying out for mercy in spite of the silence of God. Finally, we hear from Jesus, and his words are a refusal of the woman's request for mercy. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. That is a, a flat out refusal. Notice, <clears throat> also notice, it is a restatement of the boundary that exists between Jew and Gentile. The Canaanite woman, a Gentile, approaches the, Jesus with faith, and he reminds her of the boundary that exists between them as Jew and Gentile. The Jewish Messiah was sent only to the house of Israel. He couldn't help her even if he wanted to. Case closed. But is it really closed? Is the boundary really impossible to cross? The Canaanite woman apparently doesn't think so. So despite Jesus' reminder of the boundary that exists between them, she persists. This time she comes close and kneels down before him as if to physically demonstrate that there doesn't need to be anything separating them. If Jesus will not respond to her, to her uh, shouts from afar, she will come close, scandalously close. She will cross the physical space that separates them and bows down before him and plead once more for her, her stricken daughter, Lord, help me. And again, Jesus rebuffs her with, with a slur. 
He says, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It is an eth ethnic slur that reinforces the boundary between Jew and Gentile. There's no way around it. Even though many people have tried to soften uh, the words of Jesus. For Jews, dogs were unclean animals. And to refer to Gentiles as dogs was a well-known uh, term of scorn. Jesus refers to Gentiles as dogs, and we, we may find ourselves reeling backwards, wanting to retreat to the familiar territory of pious sentimentality. But what did the Canaanite woman do? Again, she perhit, persists, this time taking the insult hurled her way and turning it back upon Jesus. She will not retreat to her own territory. She will not let the barriers keep her away. Her need is too great and her faith is too strong. She says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. It's a bit of Middle Eastern banter. Take the words of your opponent and throw them right back at him. Then something clicked. Jesus' sense of identity and mission was transformed by this Canaanite woman. Or maybe it was our limited perception of Jesus' identity and mission that were transformed. Isaiah says, And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to love the name of the Lord, these I will bring to my holy mountain and bring them joyful in, in my house. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Jesus' encounter with a Gentile woman, um, we are reminded of the revelation that because Jesus is the Messiah of Israel, he is called to reach out to the entire world. Whatever it was, something fell into place and Jesus' sense of identity and mission was enlarged. He says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish, and her daughter was made well. In the messy, conflicted world of first century Palestine, Jesus enters and encounters a Canaanite woman out on the border between Jewish and Gentile territory. It's a profound story of thresholds being crossed, boundaries being propped up, and then being broken again. It is a troubling and painful story of misunderstanding and insult. But it is a story of a blessing received through persistence and the faith of the de desperate woman. And through her persistence and faith, the walls separating Jew from Gentile, male from female, friend from enemy, come tumbling down. And our understanding of Christ's mission was transformed into a message of hope and salvation for the whole world. Where are the borderlands of your faith and life? When have you come up against the painful reality of boundaries separating you from others, from God, even from your own self? Have you felt the pain of misunderstanding and the sting of insult that accompanies our best efforts to get to know our neighbors? Have you come up against the fearful silence of God in the face of a cry for mercy? Our gospel lesson for today shows these situations in all their depth, in all their pain, and in all of their confusion. And yet it also knows that when we venture out into the borderland and when we cross the boundaries that separate us from one another, we will be transformed it may be messy. We may find ourselves misunderstood and confused and insulted. But in spite of all this, there is a promise, a promise that at the board, borderlands of our faith, we will be transformed, a promise that somehow, as we venture out across these borders, we will find our deepest and truest lives. 
we will find an enlarged sense of meaning and purpose in our lives. We will find the fearsome blessing of God. Amen. Continue with the hymn. Singing when we come to worship is one way for us to praise our Lord. This morning I looked up on Google and the Bible says the word praise or praising or praise over 250 times. God instructs us to praise him. And one way we can do that, as it says in Psalm 100, is lift a joyous noise unto the Lord, come before his presence with singing. So let us bring praise to our Lord by joining together as we are instructed to do lift us to sing to praise to our Lord and his great name.
Please rise as you are able and let us join as one church for the prayers of our church and the people. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Dear God, life is not simple. Sometimes we are afraid to speak out, to act with kindness, or to do better. Help us to be bold in our faith, to use what we have in service to one another. Hear us, O oh God. Dear God, thank you for your creation, your generous gifts of sun and rain to grow our crops, nurture life, and sustain all living creatures. We pray for all those dealing with the aftermath of wildfires, floods, and excessive heat. May you find in your mercy to bring relief and hope to all those afflicted. Hear us, O oh God. Dear God, help us to have the courage and, and to feed the hungry and provide homes for the homeless. We have the resources. We lack the will to distribute where needed. Help us to overcome our selfish, selfishness. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, your son, the great physician, is needed by all who are dealing with physical and mental affliction. Some days the pain may be overwhelming and the sad news too difficult to hear. When those days are upon us, dear Lord, hold us closer love us more and help us remember our hope lies in you to have the strength to endure today we especially pray for andy and ann becky and clarence corinne darla and dave david gloria houston Jaden, john judy and karen carla C carol nathan patty parker rachel scott and will hear us oh god your mercy is great we pray, dear Father, for our new member of the faith, Delilah Ray, and we pray for her family, that you lead and guide them and love them always. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we ask you to lead a pastor to, cho to choose to serve St. John's as our shepherd. We look forward to sharing our journey of faith and service with them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And please join with us now in our final petition that will be shown on the screen. And in the bulletin, with everlasting Lasting thanks and joy, joy for your love and, and forgiveness, forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. again. This, this week, week help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others uplifting lives we ask all in the name of your dear son our savior jesus christ amen you may be seated as we receive our morning offering
our offertory prayer. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts from your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed through your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our communion service begins with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are well of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is, this, is, this is the covenant. Um, just a minute. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, now on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, and all are welcome. You know, worship for everyone, and it involves everything, everything in us. And I pray that tonight you wouldn't just watch an incredible night unfold before you, but just see it happen and not participate. But I'm believing.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Together we pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at the banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As we close our service, let us lift our voices to our Lord as we sing, All the people said amen. a few uh, quick announcements. There's many announcements in the back of the bulletin, so please take time to read those. Um, there will be communion offered this Wednesday, August 23rd. The service is at 6 p.m. at the Veterans Park here in Marion, so you are invited to attend that. Co um, Sunday school and confirmation will be starting soon. We do still need Sunday school teachers, 
So if you feel God pulling at your heart, please reach out to the office. They're trying to make it so we have a lot of people, so not a lot of work. So if you are called to even lead one Sunday, um, please reach out. It's, it's a wonderful experience. I've done it many, many times. Um, there's many other things in the Bible or in the bulletin, so please take a peek at that. And there are cookies and bars after the service in the great room, so please enjoy as we celebrate our newly joined member of the faith here. Please stand for the blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the harvest. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And all God's people said, Amen. Remember, life is difficult, so Praise go and have a blessed week. Thank you.